Good evening, everyone. My name is Elizabeth, the Education Coordinator for Marlene's Market in Delhi. Tonight's special guest that we have with us is Nicole Worth. She is a licensed massage uh, therapist and also um, lymphatic drainage uh, therapist and has a plethora of other amazing modalities and expertise and knowledge to share with us tonight. So let's give Nicole a round of, a, a virtual round of applause. Oh, thank you. So it looks like we have a few people on. I love questions and comments and things like that and kind of do better one-on-one -on -one in that way. I'm not too much of a lecturer, but I am here to share what I know and I'm super excited to be here. Um, so who am I? Well, um, that was a good intro. Um, I am a body worker and I do usually work with energy in people's bodies. And I am a lymphatic therapist, um, have been doing that for 22 years. And in lymphatic work, which is, I think, not as well known, I think people know about that system, but they don't really know much about lymphatic work. But I think I've lectured a lot on that. Definitely check out my YouTube channel for that or even other Marlene's lectures that I've done. But if I was to water it all down, lymphatic work is definitely um, a lot of memories and pulling things out of the tissues. And so why don't we just change what is in the tissues, right, with the harmonic egg? And that's kind of been my latest evolution. Um, I still love lymphatic work, do tens of it. Um, and sometimes people just want that guidance and they want me to work with their body energy and shift it in that way. And they deal with congestion or confusion and it definitely cleans that up. But I find that people do also just want to work with their own energy. And that is definitely amazing in something called the harmonic egg. Um, I guess I could flip my camera actually pretty easily around and you could see my big egg right here. Um, and this harmonic egg, if you can see it on the thing, um, has a little, it's like a little uh, hollow guitar, so, so, so to speak, like a little wooden room that you would step into. And if you can kind of see a little bit of the foot there and you recline in a zero gravity chair and you listen to music and we shift vibration that way and you work with your own energy. Um, now it's important to sort of understand the harmonic egg because it is a vibrational chamber. We say that you're dipping below consciousness and you dream and you think. And of course, that's 80% of what we're thinking um, dictates 20% of what we know consciously day by day uh, is, is going on. And so when you're in there, um, you're working with that subconscious. So you have access, it's a magnifier, and you have access to more information. So what I found with running the harmonic egg for, I guess it's going to be, it's about four and a half years, um, that I use it as a lymphatic tool to help um, people move the congestion in their body lymphatically, but then go into the harmonic egg. There's just like a moment when I'm working with different people that I can just tell there's like an emotional block, or I can tell there's a physical pain, um, or... Um, just a myriad of different reasons. And I will recommend that they do one or two harmonic egg sessions. And it just brings up that subconscious. So the latest thing, which is why you came today, is how does this relate to the eye? Well, it's kind of interesting to me because um, the eye actually, uh, it, the topography of the eye, all the little uh, elements of the eye we're gonna go over to a little bit today, um, they actually do reflect what's happening in the body. And you might have heard of that type of um, therapy, which is called iridology. And what I'm doing in the eye readings, as I refer to them as eye readings, we're actually looking at returning, just like that subconscious information that you're working with in the harmonic egg or at night when you sleep. Um, it's just in the egg, it's magnified, is that we actually uh, start to connect to who we are as a person, uh, what, what our purpose is, and we return back to um, who we are. We sort of lose our way a little bit, right? And so we're gonna talk a little bit about that um, in relation to that. Before I dive into that, I always like to cover what my offering is, just in case you hop off early, you'll remember. 
Um, so this is my contact information here. Hopefully you can see it. Um, is, and this one's a really specific Marlene special. Hopefully you can see that. Um, it's really just more for me to make sure I stay on track. That it's um, $888 actually for the Marlene special. We do a uh, iPhoto with a really 24 megapixel, really, really small. We can get into the fibers of the eye very easily. Um, pretty expensive camera. Um, and we take a picture of the eye. And so you actually can get uh, two photos, two eye photos. So we do the one eye photo, we do an eye consultation. Um, we uh, are gonna go over what that eye consultation kind of looks like. You get actually a hard copy of your eye. Um, I've actually been to an iridologist. Uh, the first time I went was in my twenties, I'm 45. And I will share my experience in a little bit. But I, I didn't get a copy of my eye. I was so disappointed. Um, on the first one, I asked her if I could, but after that, I nobody would ever offer it. So that's something I do, which is kind of a big deal. So you'll get a hard copy of your eye. It'll be uh, sent to you. Um, then you'll work with that uh, email that I'm going to send to you. And the consultation itself is really um, what can shift a lot of the uh, energy and remembering. Uh, who we are and where we're working already. Um, and then the email um, is the next steps, um, where you're going from there and what to work with. And then we come back in. Some people, I usually think like three months to anywhere from two weeks to three months, depends on how aggressive you're working with your eye and working with your next steps. Um, you can come back in and have a second photo and a second consultation, and you will see changes in the eye. So pretty exciting. So that is going to be the offering for the Marlene special. Um, you'll want to get a hold of me this month. So let's take a look at some fill-ins. I kind of like fill-ins, I have to say. All right, so I haven't seen any questions so far. I'm kind of curious if anybody, if you could put in the chat, if you've ever had an eye reading, and I'm gonna share really quickly how mine went in my 20s. So I went in, oh good, there's a couple more people. Um, I went in for an eye reading and I have to say, I left that appointment feeling very much aware that my body was falling apart and I had lots of problems and I needed tons of supplements and maybe I would improve if I did them daily for years on end. And I just didn't feel good about myself when I left that meeting. I remember sort of doing some of the things that she suggested, but it just felt like my uh, genetics was already determined. I already felt like my DNA was exactly as it was going to be as good as it was going to be. And I just didn't feel very good. And I actually uh, waited, didn't surprisingly, right? Didn't get another reading. I think it was maybe five years or something. And again, I just left this meeting feeling not very good about myself. So these eye readings are completely different. And I'm gonna go over that. So excited to share a bunch of things. So did anybody put in the chat if you've had an um, eye reading before? Have you had a picture of your eye before? Um, do you have an old photo, which is actually has been fun, but it's really rare, is that somebody has a picture uh, of their eyes um, uh, so that we can even compare from ones that are a long time ago. If you don't know, there is a topography to the eye, right? There is all of our anatomy is there. So hopefully you can see, um, usually this is a lecture I do in person, but so we have an eye, right, that gets uh, created when we're young in the womb and actually stems from brain matter. So really interesting how our eye has that memory and connection to the brain. Um, so important when we're talking about how we're talking to ourselves and thoughts and we're doing these eye readings that it actually every single element in the brain is and the body is going to show up. So yeah, we're going to have uh, all of this anatomy on the left side and the right. So, so much to contemplate here. 
if we looked a little bit closer at this, if you can see it a little bit, um, we've got heart here at about three o'clock. And so has anybody had any broken heart situations, loss or anything, and then suddenly started to feel like their immune system went down? Well, it's across from the thymus. So this will actually show up in the eye. Anybody have any upper back pain? We're gonna see that right in here, upper back pain, and it's gonna go right across to the shoulder. So interesting how they are all related. Even reproduction will show up in the eye. Um, something that I go over with my lymphatic clients is how to warm up their ovaries, rubbing their hands together and placing them over their eyes or their ovaries. Yeah, so it's so interesting how that'll also show up in the eye. Um, in fact, I think it's fact that people uh, that are maybe on the borderline of being diabetic, you could go to an iridologist and find out the topography of your eye and diagnose you months and months and months before maybe you actually are. Now, if that's your thing, finding out what's wrong with you, which I don't know about you, but I don't like to go to somebody to find out all the things that are wrong with me, I want to find out what my strengths are. And that's what we do in the eye readings. So we also take a look as a lymphatic therapist, herbalist, using essential oils, using the harmonic egg as a tool, craniosacral therapist, master fermentationist. We actually have a strength that's going to return to us. And basically, we're going to remember actually who we are. So what we see when we actually look at the eye, I'm gonna tell you what we see typically, what an, uh, a person would see, is we would take in, in genetically, hopefully you can see this, genetically plus experientially. Right? So when we look at the eye, we're taking in genetics, right? When you come in for an eye reading with me, I'm going to look at your genetics. I'm going to look at your experience of your world uh, through the eye because everything relates back to that. Um, and we're also going to see in the eye emotions. So we're not going to just look at the thymus. We're not going to just look at the heart. We're actually going to look at thought, words, and deeds. And yes, they show up in the eye. And yes, when we shift them, they do change instantaneously in the eye. Super cool. So what we made up and proved. I don't know about you, but I've had lots of experiences that make this true. Hopefully it makes sense to you. What we made up, right? Have you ever been in a situation where somebody maybe didn't say hello to you and they went and sat down? I don't know, you're at a, uh, an event or something like that, or even a holiday party or something. And you're like, gosh, they didn't even come over and say hi to you. And then you're off and running with a full story that's completely made up and you've proved that it's true. And this will show up in the eye, right? How we are in relationships, how we partner, all of these things are gonna show up. And so what we made up and proved is actually gonna be showing up in the eye as well. And what's operating in our lives frequently, right? So we're going to see frequency. We're going to see if it's a lot of times or a little bit, or if there's a tendency, we're going to see if it's a closed root. I'm going to show you examples of this in an eye here in a minute. We're going to talk about left brain and right brain, where we're working, iris constitutions. I'm going to show you thought word and deed, and then I'm going to show you some real eyeballs, and then we're going to wrap things up. So that's sort of the layout. So what's operating in our lives frequently other than consciously, right? So that's that image again that I was telling you in the harmonic egg or when we're sleeping at night, again, the harmonic egg just magnifies this, makes it easier for you to work with your own energy. You're gonna dip below consciousness, get very, very relaxed, just like you do at night or even deeper. And you're going to dream and you're going to think and that subconscious that's 80% dictating what we work with 20% consciously. All of that's going to be in the eye though. Pretty cool. So we have the right eye that shows the left brain and the right side of the body. So I was looking at somebody's eyes doing a consultation this morning 
um, and they have really tight IT bands. I, I can see that in the eye. I know that from working on them physically, I didn't need to work on them physically to find that uh, root in there um, and return them back to better digestion, right? Which is the IT band. So again, it's right eye, left brain, right side of the body. That's usually the father side genetically. And the left eye goes to the right brain, but then it corresponds to the left side of the body, which is mother um, genetically. So I'm gonna go over how a session usually runs here in a minute, but instead of labeling what's wrong, right? We don't wanna label what's wrong with the body. We want to discover what strength is returning. Um, I don't know about you if you have siblings, but I have siblings and I always find it funny when we get together on holidays or weekends, we do like a sister weekend kind of thing and we'll get together and we'll be chit chatting. And my sister is four years older than me. And then my younger sister is 13 years younger than me. And my brother is 12 years younger, but we usually do sister weekends. And I'm just so amazed at what our body like consciously can forget about something. I'll remember an experience of going to the beach as a family or something and how something, something transpired and I thought it was this and it was that. And somebody else is like, no, 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 this is what happened. It's just so interesting because my body remembers everything 100% in its subconscious. So sometimes we're dictated by things that we just don't spend the time actually connecting. So again, um, in our consultation, we, I ask questions and we bring those things up and we remember. It all shows up in the eye. So what are we working with when we say it all shows up in the eye? I wanna make sure I'm clear about this. So I did another little fill in. Hopefully I'm not losing anybody. And I'm gonna check here in a minute if you've had an iridology appointment, how did that go? Do you have a photo of your eye? Super curious. Um, okay, so iris. So the iris of the eye is right here. If you can see that right here is the iris. And what does the iris show to me doing an eye reading? All the information. All the information in the physical body. It can be emotional. Sometimes when we're talking about these things, emotions will come up and they'll go away. That emotion goes away. Again, changes happen in the eye. So the pupil, right, which is up here, we'll also take a look at your pupil. And the pupil is how we send and receive. So interesting, the pupil of the eye. Um, oftentimes we'll see this uh, in the photos. I'll try to remember to mention it again. If you're, uh, you know, again, we were talking about left and right. So if the right eye is really brilliant, really bright, they're really uh, much of a giver. If you, and hopefully you're running into the bathroom to like look at your mirror and look at your eye because you will see these things. Of course, you won't see all the little fibers from my camera, but um, this is definitely a takeaway. If you go in and you look at the left uh, side, uh, your left eye, sorry, your left eye, you'll actually see if it's really, really bright that you're better at uh, receiving. That's your strength, receiving what's happening. Um, and so that's something that we do take a look at. Um, and then that's the pupil. So that's right up here. And then we have the sclera, which I think is actually the most fun probably to take a look at. Well, it's all kind of fun, I guess. Let's see here, what color did I use? I guess I used a different color, but we're gonna do sclera. So that is actually the white. Let me put that over here. So when you look at your eye, right, you can see the pupil, the black component, and then the color part of your eye is the iris. And then you're gonna see the white part of your eye and that is the sclera. And that is what actually we attract in from others. So we can see, maybe I should do that in color. We can see uh, how you respond to other people if that's a strength or not a returning. 
So this is what we're going to be working with when we do um, a consultation. So when you think about this, it's fact that if the structure of the iris, right, this, this part right here, the structure of the iris is a structure of genetics, right, DNA. And I've heard just time and time and time again that our DNA can actually, that we can change it, right? We can change our food. We can restructure it in that way. We can change our thought patterns. Um, if we grew up with macaroni and cheese or something as a comfort food, we can change what our comfort is, right? Um, and so we can change our DNA and I believe it. Um, if it doesn't show up as a change in the eye, we didn't actually change the DNA. And honestly, like, I feel like when I'm doing these consultations, I'm just talking to people and, and just by talking to people, asking questions by looking at the topography of the eye, it's not what's wrong. It's just asking them questions and bringing things up more consciously, um, things where they're already working. And I'm gonna show you an example of that at the end. So what I'm looking for when I look at the eye is we're looking for consultations um, and contrasts. So here, I'm gonna show you some examples. Hopefully you'll be able to see these up close. So come really close. If you look at this set of eyes, this is the left. Which one looks brighter? If you can see, which one looks brighter? Is it that left side or is it the right side? It looks like the left. Yeah, so it's so interesting. Uh, how much this left eye, right? So when we think about this person, this is a real person, has a whole family, genetics, has emotion, is wonderfully made. So when I think of this, I think of this as such sac sacred work. I think that's why I haven't talked about it in this public format, because I think it's such a sacred thing. But that being said, this is definitely someone who receives so it's a little tricky maybe online here, but if you notice, there's a lot more of an edge to the eye than this one, if you look really closely. And so I maybe, if this was my person, uh, I actually have done this. Uh, these are ones that I'm getting ready to do. But if I had this person right in front of me, I would just ask a couple questions and see and navigate where they're working, uh, where they're ready to work consciously, I should say. And so uh, I would ask them, how do you uh, feel about your feelings? How do you feel about feeling? And I'm gonna guess this person um, doesn't like what they receive at one point in time. But at the same time, when I look at this, there's been so many life events that they've navigated that are actually showing the strength. Again, I'm gonna give you an idea of a consultation here at the end. We're just sort of looking right now at different eyes. So yeah, that one is uh, one way that we can look at an eye is feeling. Now this next one, it might even look very similar, but there are no two eyeballs alike, no two people alike, immune systems completely different, siblings growing up in the same area, it's gonna be completely different eyeballing. Um, but if you notice little, in this one, you'll see little white uh, rings. Do you see the white rings on this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was on the last one, if you caught that. But what's interesting about this one is this person is a blue eye. So if you look really closely at the rings, you'll see a little bit of blue. You'll also sort of notice, so I would ask some questions about that uh, and, and uh, see what they're working with already consciously. Here's another example. This person on the top here, if you notice the little circle here, it's a little bit boxy. So if you can see this one, um, you can see the color change. This is the autonomic nervous system. And this one, it's just a little different shape, right? So I would ask this person about being creative and how they're showing up in their creative world. And before I ask that, if that's not the avenue in to bringing something consciously up, I might ask them how they partner. And I would start over here then. I would go back this way. Because um, it looks like they're already working in this way. It looks like it's sort of balancing. And the reason why I know that is because the fibers are, are, are filling in. 
So when we look at the fibers being so individual, if you can see that they're so individual, and you're gonna see more examples of this, um, that person is filling in. So maybe I'll give you a quick example of what I mean, totally jumping ahead, why not? Um, and this one I'm gonna talk about in more depth, but see how there's lots of areas not filled in, right? So this person is working on this, I can really tell. Because each little fiber, it's not as much black in between, it's a different kind of gray. So we're not in black, this person's been working on it. Um, is this helpful? I hope you guys have any questions. Let's check and see if we had any, I didn't see any, where's the chat? Oh, there's a couple chats. Oh, just, just, just uh, information to contact me. Okay. Um, so then if we go ahead, if you're looking at your own eye, just go ahead and look and see what you're going to find. If you can see the autonomic nervous system on your own eye and see if you notice any of these little shapes, these little shapes right around the new nerve root. It just gives me information about that person and a way, an avenue in to talk about it. Maybe I'll skip ahead. Maybe this is boring. Part. I don't know. Okay, so I think it's super fascinating. But let's cover some, let's jump ahead and we're gonna cover, so in lymphatic work, um, I'm gonna show you, in lymphatic congestion will show up in the eye. And in this person, this person's actually uh, doesn't do any lymphatic work with me. Um, we work uh, actually around craniosacral work. Um, and I have wanted her to come in for lymphatic work. She's going to work uh, more consciously and do an eye reading. Love it. We can shift a lot, all of the lymph congestion she wants by just working on those thought patterns. But what I want you to notice is that's all that lymph congestion. Yeah, it's a lot around the skin. So I'm going to talk with her about that. I'm going to see where she's working consciously with that and see what the avenue in is about that. Um, but so that is lymphatic congestion. And you'll see this one who is a client of mine, you'll see, uh, I didn't take a picture when they very first started working with me. I'm, I'm fairly certain all of that has been clearing up. All of the organs are functioning better, which I've been feeling in her body. And I know that because the lung is actually improving. Um, so, so interesting, could have just done an eye photo with her and worked on it that way. Um, but again, it's, it's important to work with what people are working with already and just encourage them in that direction. So those are a few there. And so nobody on here has ever had a eye consultation. Maybe I should go over what we do. I guess I've hit it a little bit. But let's do a demo of an eye consultation. So this is one that I've done before. And basically, when I started to do this consultation with this person, I, I noticed several topography things that I started with. I asked them, how do they partner with people? Or maybe take a look at the eye. I asked them, how do they partner with people? How, how was their upbringing with their parents? Did their parents divorce? I don't remember the exact questions, but it was like a couple questions and then they were often running answering. And they were recalling memories and sharing things. And that consciousness, that subconscious was starting to come up and be more conscious about how their parents partnered and how do they partner. And when I could see it starting to come to more consciousness, I mean, they really just sort of answer some of their own questions. Um, but I moved on to, if you can see in here, this is all the brain, so many fibers. See how there's fibers missing, like we talked about earlier. So many fibers filled in right here. This person is super creative, super creative. So many fibers. And this is where we look at the constitution. This constitution is a little bit of go, 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 go. And they're very good at it. But what's interesting here is I would ask them about creativity and in the consult, uh, boy, they were off and running. I could just see so much vibrancy of them sharing how creative they are and how 
it lights them up and all of these things. And I asked them then, how are they showing up in that creativity? How does that show up in their life? How do they show up or do they allow people in? How do they allow people in? And inevitably, as we went into more of that, this again, wasn't an area where they were necessarily working, which is kidney and partnering. And so we, that was not the avenue in where they're currently working. And so they're currently working here at Creativity and they shared with me how they're showing up more in their world. If you look really closely, the eye is a little bit oblong. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little bit oblong. This one more than this one, the left one a little bit more. But if you can look really closely around the scleral, there's actually, that's the eye underneath. It's getting covered up by the scleral. Now, remember the scleral, we talked about just very briefly, that that is the environment. That's the outside world. That's how they're affected by other people. So there, it's coming forward. And so I know that they're working in this area and we spent time working on that area and encouraging them in that way. And inevitably it's 180 degree difference. Remember we talked about heart being across from thyroid and how those can interplay. Same thing here with kidney. This is uh, what we would call a kidney wedge. If you can kind of see a little uh, wedge kind of an area where they are working. Um, but we want to bring it in even more conscious and have them remember that not only are they creative, not only can they show up, but they can partner well. So, and the reason why I know that that is something that they're working on is if you look at the scleral, it's got this little blood shot kind of element, a little, a little life going to an area, um, but it's, it's a little hook. So it's no longer life force going to that area. They've healed a little bit in that area. So really interesting. I think there was another one I wanted to show you. Let's see if I can find, I'm thinking of another eye to show you the square all. I wonder if I have it with me. Mm, looks like I didn't bring it. Yeah, it looks like I don't have it. Let me show you another example. This person has several healing ones. Even this one, this one's a little hook where they've healed. This one's a little hook. You know, this one has branched out, if I can pinpoint it. This one's branched out, started to branch out and then is recoiling back. These are all areas again, where it's done some healing work and that vibrancy is happening. So they're working down here. Um, yeah, but I don't have another example. I don't think of another, well, there's this one where if that's the outside environment, right? And this is one example where there's some red showing up, some stress from outside sources. Um, but what about this one? Lots more, right? Lots more red. Yeah. So I would ask them about that. How do they feel about being seen? Because I can see the congestion is actually in that area as well. And I just see where that takes us. So those are some examples. I don't know how we're doing on time. Um, of the constitutions and some things that we would see. So let me see, was our, I, Elizabeth, you're always so good at telling me if there's anything in the chat, but it looks like nothing in the chat. No questions yet, but uh, feel free folks to enter uh, questions yeah. in the chat box if you're shy. Any eyeball questions? <laughs> or questions about the process of doing an eye reading. Oh, yes, uh, feel free to un unmute yourself. There we go. Hi, hello. Yes. Hello. Uh, Elizabeth, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I pressed star nine <laughs> by mistake, but I have a question. Okay. I'll try to have a what? very good answer for you. Okay. I'm just wondering if a person has had an operation on their eye retina, what do you, what effect, if any, does an operation and laser treatments for glaucoma and things like that have on how you can 
tell yes, the person? Yes, there is no contraindication to reading the eye, and we would simply it we would simply see that that had happened. Um, we would see okay. how you responded to it, and it's not a yeah. contraindication. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think as a therapist too, um, I didn't mention, but I have different techniques that I do where I I, I don't move fluid, and um, mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. I work the lymphatic system by working nerve endings and the brain. The brain oh. and I are just so so fascinating. Um, so yes, yeah, so in that case where there is a, some obviously that's a vision, right? And mm -hmm. Right. Oftentimes, and I didn't touch on this, but oftentimes, uh, and I, I'm sure you guys have heard this before, it's kind of a basic concept, but at the same time, it's, it bears repeating, is that wherever we sort of feel like we struggle, let's say we struggle with anxiety or something like that, which I've been seeing a lot in my office lately, um, actually, those people, that's where their strength is. So oftentimes, so if you have uh, had surgeries on your eyes and there's been some vision issues, honestly, I bet if I, I would just bet my life on it, if I saw your eye, that actually you are a visionary. You have a unique way of looking at the world that we just, we just need to foster that. We need to have phrases to say. And so I usually, like I said, I do an email follow-up. And in that email follow-up, um, I give you uh, some nutrition if you want. It really kind of depends on how the session goes. Because again, we're not there to tell you mm -hmm. you're doing anything wrong. We're here to support the next, mm -hmm. the next upgrade, okay. right? Yeah. And so yeah. oftentimes, um, yeah, you can hop off if you want. I hope I didn't. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. But, but basically, um, we do affirmations. So I don't know if you uh, work with affirmations. I know it's sort of a hot word, but I think for me, like what, in terms of working with affirmations, it's really important, which I've shared before when I've lectured is that we ask empowering questions. So the example I usually give is around wealth. People say, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, I'm wealthy, I'm rich. And they start saying all this and then they're like struggling and they're like, boy, I'm saying all these affirmations and it's not really working. I don't understand what the problem is. But the problem is, is that our brain, again, going back to our brain, is so interesting how it works, how it wants to uh, solve problems, but it also wants to keep us safe. So it actually will tell us, don't go and do that. That's too hard. Just stay home. Like it'll, don't speak up, you know, whatever. It'll keep us safe. And so we need to sort of engage with that part of our brain and we need to ask empowering questions. You know, what, why am I wealthy? Then the brain is trying to solve that problem. Why am I wealthy? Gosh, why am I wealthy? And I will ask this to people, a unique question in a consultation with them uh, around specific things to them, but this is just the example. Um, and I will ask them, why are they wealthy? And they struggle like coming up with it. And it's because it's a new way of using the brain to work. But of course, why are you wealthy? Well, you're wealthy because you have lots of friends. You're wealthy because you have time freedom in your job. You're wealthy because you have a paid vacation with your job. You know, there's lots of wealth. And then if there's an issue coming up with it, there's usually a gap in belief and believing it. And so you can even add a qualifier to that empowering question. Why am I wealthy today? Well, today I'm wealthy because you know, whatever, a friend called me this morning and, you know, I, I felt really needed and I was offered some assistance and, and they used it and, you know, whatever. And through the day, right. I took the day off. Um, so there's a, a wealth. It doesn't have to be an abundance. It doesn't have to be monetary either. So that's another reason why I love that as an example. Um, cause the brain is like, I'm not wealthy. I only have $17 in, in my bank account. Like I'm not wealthy. So the belief gap is too big, right? So that's what I like about the affirmations that I have. When we go to say them, I've actually had people start to have, um, depending on how aggressive they're working with these affirmations that are so specific to the topography of the eye, they actually will start to have like a little ache uh, in their eye or they will feel something and it's energy shifting and it's believing that that's true. So then we add in empowering questions and we add in qualifiers. Um, to help work with that. And that's why I offer the second 
eye photo because I, I love people to see changes in the eye. It's really that simple. So, yeah. Seeing is believing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yes, you. you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. A great question. Yeah, I know it's a new concept. So I'm so grateful that there's even just a few people on um, around. Uh, I think it's not a new concept to work with thought or belief, but the fact that it will be in the eye, everything will show up there. Yeah, um, as they say, it's the, it's the gateway to the soul and uh, it's very true. Yeah, even when we're doing photos, um, you know, I had somebody, again, the left eye is uh, being seen. And um, and so sometimes we'll have trouble, you know, having them hold the eye out so we can, so they can be seen, so we can get a picture, right? Um, so very interesting when we go to take the pictures, um, how that process can be, um, how that can be emotional for people. Um, because again, we're gonna see uh, perfection when we look at that eye and people are not used to, you know, having people see their strengths. So yeah, like this person, pretty cool. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, and it's been going on, I've been studying it for about 20 years, iridology, um, but, yeah, it's been about three doing um, eye readings. So very, very exciting. Well, I hope that um, I answered all of your guys' questions. I haven't seen any more questions. If you're interested in lymphatic work and clearing congestion that way, of course, I have uh, facials that are 125 and I use frequency with that as well, along clearing around the face and the head. Um, we have digestive system and all the nerve endings of the face, um, which is another therapy where I just work, people come in and leave their flows on and I just work their nerve endings. Um, and then I also do craniosacral work. So we connect the body uh, to what's going on in the brain. So sometimes there's a disconnect through that neurological pathway uh, physically in the body. Um, and so they'll leave their flows on and we'll do some beautiful craniosacral work or they really just wanna work with their own energy and they'll do the harmonic A and it's two sessions for 150. Um, and then you can actually do the harmonic A. It works so well with the eye photos. We actually have a package for that where you can get your eye photos at a discount uh, when you do harmonic egg work because they do work really well together. Um, and then I do a free eye photo if we do a long-term lymph program because um, I want to see what's going on in the eye and give you those supports on how to talk with your body um, when we do lymphatic work. Um, but you can just do the eye photos and um, these are done over Zoom. Um, and again, you get a physical copy of the eye, uh, which is just invaluable. And then I'm, you're going to get all the affirmations to uh, remember and clear and return back to all the strengths that you want to manifest in your body around those sections of the eye. Um, so those also get sent out to you. And oh, you um, have a question. Oh, okay. And then we do a second photo. And um, if we don't see changes in the eye, we need to pivot. We need to be doing something else. Um, but you'll see changes in the eye if you work it. So <laughs> Where where are you? Where where do you do your work? Yeah, I'm here now. I'm in here, which place. is where? I know. Which is in University Place. So if you are familiar with Whole Foods and Trader Joe's, I'm maybe a three-minute little card trip from there. Okay. So I have a lot of people. This is an international business, actually. So I have a lot of people that come from Gig Harbor and Purdy and all the way out to Bremerton and um, Hallsbo. And so pretty far out that way, up to Seattle, Bothell, Kirkland, you know, Canada. Um, and they'll come down for a weekend. Um, 
And again, a lot of them will add in iPhotos because we you need to sort of physically be here to do the iPhoto, but then we can do the Zoom uh, consultation and everything else over Zoom. Um, I do travel with my camera, so there is always uh, you know, an option like that where I travel up somewhere, uh, which I do often go to Spokane and treat clients over there. Um, down to California and Arizona and Colorado um, are other places. And I will travel and take pictures and then we do a consultation later. So. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And I've been here four and a half years uh, when I had added in the harmonic egg. Um, she needed a special office. So such a big little wooden room. Um, so that's why I moved here. But I've been in this area for 22 years. Yep. Perfect. Thank you, Nicole. Yes, you're Yay. welcome. And uh, for those of you that are on the call too, uh, Nicole's going to be speaking with us again uh, Thursday, March 23rd at 5 p.m. on upgrading your uh, spring detox routine. So um, you can get some more information then as well about the amazing services and expertise that Nicole has to share. And um, just to clarify, so with the with the facial, you. Uh, you use the wands, right? Like the. Uh, yeah, so with the facial, um, I do hands on work, but I also do work with several different machines that move lymphatic fluid. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so um, I think it's important to work with frequency. So everything in the office has some element of some kind of frequency that we're working with. In the lymphatic work, um, it's often working with uh, noble gases. So noble gases are on that, I'm not a chemist, I always say, but it's on that chemistry chart. And um, so that is different noble gases that actually inter, inter, uh, like interchange with our body and it knocks off extra electrons. So I don't usually go too much into the chemistry, but when we sit in front of a computer and we take on those positive charges, right? When we have wireless EMF, those are toxins that our body, our lymphatic system does have to mitigate. Um, and our brain is really affected any areas where we have fatty tissue, which is the brain for sure. Um, it'll actually uh, store those unless we have a way of getting rid of them. So one of the most effective ways I find um, is actually uh, lymphatic work. Yeah. So so yeah, we end up doing lymphatic work. Sometimes I work with my hands. Uh, sometimes I use different machines. The harmonic egg is one of the lymphatic tools. And it's really just on a case-by-case -case basis. So on my website, because I do so many different unique therapies, on my website, you'll notice that really there's only lymphatic work and the harmonic egg mentioned. And it's because those cover more, like they check more boxes on our system for regulating it than other therapies um, where we maybe might just add something to a lymphatic session or add something to a harmonic egg session. Um, so it's gonna be the place we start usually working together um, until we get some of that congestion and confusion. And I kind of say our inside feng shui is kind of organized better um, before we go into other modalities. So it just kind of depends on the person though. And that gets evaluated in the facial. And it's it's not a real facial too. I, I've had that question a, a bunch lately, like, oh, I'm not interested in a facial. I, I, my skin's okay. And actually it's just the location of the lymphatic system that we're working, um, which is the most protein rich or the most uh, heavy um, is right around the collarbones. Um, and so, yeah, so that's kind of the major drains of the lymph whole lymphatic system. So when we open up, at the face and we work all those nerve endings that I was talking about, all the stomach. We actually have two, we have organs all along here for nerve pathways and we have organs all along here. So I've had people come for a lymphatic facial and we're just gonna do an evaluation and uh, they leave and they poop like four times or you know, they uh, leave and they can't believe how wonderful they sleep for like a week or two, you know? 
So it's really quite interesting how the body, uh, how we're working nerve endings by just such a simple thing. And it's just 30 to 40 minutes session. So, wow, that's fascinating. I love that. And I love how your analogy about feng, feng shui, the inside, yes. really brings that visual. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And everybody's so different what they need. So, yes. Yeah. And I love tailoring it to people. So. Exactly. You get to, you've, uh, you get to connect with so many different people from all around the world and help them along their health journey and, and get them mm -hmm. healthy and happy. I know you're so sweet, Elizabeth. Yes, exactly. That's the goal. You know, what's funny though. I had a client in, I guess it was two days ago now. And she was like, well, she came in for a harmonic egg session. And she was like, you know, you're just a healer. Like I can tell when I, and I'm like, no, you know, your body's doing the healing. I'm really just the guide. So that is completely true when we do the eye readings. It really is a dynamic of co-creating what's going to be needed, where you're working already. And um, in lymphatic work, it's very similar. It's just more organic where we open up the whole lymphatic system and I just see where the body's already working. So that first facial, sometimes it's liver congestion, but so much happens from that one as a baseline that the second one, I can tell it's actually not the liver, it's stomach or it's pancreas, that's the issue, um, or there's an emotional block. So it really is quite co-creating for sure, um, but you're sweet. But it is really like that person being ready for shifting things. And then what I like about using frequency is even if we don't feel like we're quite ready, frequency helps us feel relaxed, helps us be ready, like helps us will ourselves. And our will is always stronger than whatever the circumstances are. So if we want change, it, it will happen. Um, we, yeah, it's so interesting how that works. I think it's, I think I've heard it's like 4,000 times more powerful, our will to do something yeah so uh so that's what we work with that's i i absolutely love that uh how you say that it's a it's a co-creation because someone who is seeking that um that guidance from you with with your with your expertise they they already took that step forward to um to seek so yeah. Yes. Yes. And I hear it a lot. I've had people say, oh, I heard you lecture like three years ago and now I'm ready. Or I just heard you lecture. I'm going to call you immediately. I'm totally ready. You know, they're calling right away. So um, whenever you're ready, I'm here for that evolution, that next upgrade for you to remember who you are, um, for you to remember your strengths. People come in and they're like, my body's falling apart. And it's like, actually, there's lots of strength in the exact area where you're struggling. So, because those are the gifts that we just need to remember. So, yeah, I'm so grateful to talk to all of you um, and on the replay. I'm going to pop back in a little bit later and see if I see any questions that I can possibly answer. I'm usually better on the phone calling me and asking questions. Um, that's more than fine. Um, so we can tailor something for you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nicole, for your wonderful expertise and um, sh sharing this amazing presentation tonight. And thank you, everyone that tuned in. We appreciate you. And yeah, definitely um, check out our website for um, Nicole's ne next class with us next month. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you.